Hey, Satnam, everyone. I want to reach out about our next full moon come together gathering. It's going to be May 14th. That is Saturday at 7.15 p.m. to 8.45. So with this of the full moon in Scorpio, I mentioned when we were together about that of death and it's going to be this um, not only embracing, but liberating in that space of um, letting go there is so much we've had to let go in these past few years and I've come to almost a place of joy in certain times because I thought oh, it allows something new in. Okay, it's painful but at the same time as spiritual beings we are meant for growth and for lessons and um, there's so much to be had when we're put on those razor edges. I'm sorry you're hearing my dog with her new squeaky toy. It won't last long, so it should stop any moment. <laughs> but um, with Jeff, I mentioned about that of how I've had this fascination with it, and I never shared more about it. It's more than the Scorpio that I am. This is where I'm so excited about this one because it's having other people dive deep into those um, strong emotions and things that Scorpios can have and um, they talk about the passion and things like that but it is the it's the highs and lows definitely with it it runs deep but there is a deeper essence of it and that was where when I was a child very young even eight years old I remember writing out um, different wills to my family and praying to God to take me out it was even before then but all of a sudden at eight, I started understanding there was something called suicide that, oh, we actually can have our own placement and choice in it. Um, and that was an interesting thing to deal with because although it wasn't um, something that I could do with my upbringing and religion, it was something that would play out. And I'd have these moments where it would really pull me in and I'd hit these dark points, but usually before night, and then the next day I'd be fine and back into the world. So when I got into Buddhism in my 20s, um, right away it was absolutely liberating to sit there, watch my breath, having a thought go by and just like a cloud in the sky think, thinking. that's That was like our cue word, and then go back to the breath. So as I was doing this, it all of a sudden became my worst nightmare because I kept seeing suicidal thoughts one by one going by when I was driving down the road, seeing the side of Vail and when you're going up I-70 that I could just turn my wheel right here, it'll look like an accident and I don't have to be here anymore. It would be one thing to the next to the next that the thinking and going back to my breath didn't work because all of a sudden I was driving in that much more over and over because as much as I'm trying to be open with it, I was really getting freaked out over what thoughts were going through and they were getting really intense. So I finally got to the point with mentioning um, with my Buddhist teacher, I made an appointment and he was one of those strong ones that I had no clue where it was going to go. I thought I may end up in a home af after this. I may be diagnosed. I I had no clue, but people could see. I, I thought the dark cloud was wrapped around me and everyone could see it. And I did have some people concerned and I wasn't sharing with anyone what was going on. So after I told him my story and how how bad it was and uncontrollable, I remember my eyes were down the whole time just trying to get through my story and I'm sobbing and I finally, I finish, I pause and look up and I see the most compassionate look into my eyes with a smile and tears just lightly glistening in his eyes and he said, it's okay, it's only a thought. And when he said that it's only a thought, it shifted my whole world. It was like that light bulb went off. Everything I was training before then with the with the meditation, everything, that that is our training ground that we can have these moments in time. We can have the 
pain. We can deal with rejection. We can deal with our child trauma and our daddy issues or whatever that can come up in our life and all this programming, all this tribal coding, all these things that we have come up, but we do not have to sit there and identify that's me. It's a moment in time. It is just a part of the story of where we're at right now and we can release it we can let it go. It's not in the present. And if it doesn't go, okay, I'll sit with you here right now. You're having your tantrum. It's okay. It doesn't feel great. I don't want to stay camping here, but I can allow it to have its breathing room that it needs. And when it's time to say goodbye, we can say goodbye. And when you return, I'll say hello again. And again, you're not camping out here. I'm not identifying with you. I can then let you go. For children, I have this in one of my books. Um, there is a practice I put in there where it talks about I'm not my feelings, my thoughts. It's um, having to do with this right here of just exploring, not just the we get caught up in the I am that I am, but to allow the breathing room of I am not that we do not have to hold on to all these things and thoughts. The Buddha talked about the cause of suffering is our attachment to permanence. And nothing is permanent rather than that of impermanence itself. There is always shift happening. And so giving ourselves that grace to that, it's okay, it's a moment. So I hope you join me for uh, the Saturday event, May 14th, 7.15 with Biley. She's going to be doing her powerful Reiki work. We're going to be doing more of pranayam work with the breath. Um, that is a big thing with life. The prana is life bringing in and also the suspension and uh, doing a nice energetic clearing too because that was another piece of moving through a lot of those energies I was having and realizing oh, some of it may not be my own and some of it that is my own. Again, I can let that go too. So much love. Bye.